My talk is a bit about hacking into clouds, but more into the automotive area. So my expertise, I come from more hacking into different factories, different uh, suppliers, different areas. I have my, if you can see, my job as I work for a company called Simotive. It's a company owned by Volkswagen, partially. And what we do, usually we do lots of end-to-end -to -end security testing, breaking into clouds, breaking into different infrastructures of the different OEMs that uh, we are working with. We are also creating and bypassing ECU protections and showing how we can hack into the ECUs and also uh, building different security products. So in the last year, I've been defining and uh, helping with building different security products with my knowledge of how to hack into stuff. So about myself a bit. So I was... I was playing a lot with robotics in the past. Um, from high school, I won uh, different awards uh, from the FRC, um, for, for first robotics competition, it's a NASA competition, and the Trinity firefighting uh, competition. I won the most bugs awarded in a car hacking event, uh, that was last year. Uh, and um, last year, uh, two years ago, I was uh, traveling with my daughter and wife. We were just taking a year off life and uh, traveling Southeast Asia with Switzerland and stuff like that. So about a bit about what I'm, what I will talk about and what I won't talk about. So because I'm working with all these OEMs and different companies and they have very strict NDAs and uh, they don't allow me to expose nothing. So I did want to expose a, a, a few stuff. And what I decided to do, I, I don't put any names of any of my clients. I don't put any knowledge of what what's happening and they played around a bit with the vulnerabilities in order to not to have a full fa full chain of exploit so but first i think you anybody here knows about the automotive industry like a bit okay so most don't so i want a bit to talk about more about what is the inside the automotive industry and what changes what changed in the different evolutions that we're having so the first evolution, we are using the key. So the key in the past, it was like a very low tech key that is very easy to hack. And what happened is there were, became a requirement to have more security and more, more integrations into the key. And we got this key that has a RFID and it has different kind of a, a connections with the, with the systems in order to make sure that nobody can steal a key. And we have like now keyless systems and different uh, systems like that. But for this, we the automotive industry isn't working by itself. The OEMs are working with different suppliers. So every supplier, so every technology that we are using, we are using a different supplier. Over here, I saw some Siemens and some Lear and we have Continental and we have Bosch. And we have lots of different ECUs, so suppliers that are going into the car. And this means that we are also need, need to connect to different suppliers and need to connect to everything. But if we are looking in the future, now we are planning putting keys inside our mobile phones. And in order to have keys inside the mobile phones, we have to have a way to download it to the mobile phone. So we have to have trust anchors with Apple and with uh, Google and with the different, um, uh, like Verizon, uh, the cellular uh, providers. So we are now getting connectivity, not only to the suppliers of the keys of the physical, like uh, Siemens and Lear, we are also having connections to the different uh, back, uh, mobile providers. Again, the same thing is happening with gas. So with gas in the past, like this was from Thailand, I saw lots of uh, gasoline uh, bottles. This was very low tech. You just filled in your uh, vehicle, nothing happened. But then we are going into charging the uh, pumps. So I have a fuel pump. I want to have payless, uh, like plug in the plug in charge and plug in um, fuel uh, devices. So I have uh, usually they sell some kind of fuel uh, payment uh, IDs that I can pay with. And now in the future, we are also looking at uh, full electricity charging. So we have connectivity to the different backend, the third party vendors that know how to charge me and know how much uh, power I, I consumed. So I'm having all these connections to the different OEMs, to the different suppliers. 
with diagnostics, the same happen, happened. So the automotive industry is using lots of lots of diagnostics uh, capabilities. You always want to make sure that your car is running up, and you want to even give uh, give access to third parties uh, like the right to repair. And uh, other uh, every garage has diagnostics. Over here, uh, we can see in the past we have all the diagnostics, but then we went into the new. New kind. This is a diagnostic, the regular garage diagnostics. Uh, they connect to an OBD port. OBD port. Every every car in, uh, has an OBD port under usually under the steering wheel, and you can just connect to it and uh, get diagnostic data from the car. But you can also upload data. You can download data from the car. You can do different stuff. And this is the garages usually have it in order to support and in order to software upgrade. So these devices are. In order to work, they have to be connected to the different, uh, to get downloaded data. So in the middle, you can see it's already connected. You, it's connected to the internet or through Wi-Fi or for whatever. And it does open me a connection to the car. There's also OBD dongles that the insurance companies uh, give me that they are getting me a direct connection from the internet to the car. So we have all these different connections. And when we are looking in the future, under the future design, we have like diagnostic over IP and we have different capabilities inside the car that it's always diagnosed. So when I will want to diagnose a car, I will just need to request access from the provider that or from the OEM or from the supplier, he will open me access and I will be able to um, send diagnostic messages through the 3G or through the cellular connections. So in order to bypass all the um, connecting stuff. And the... so this is a bit of a map of how how connected the vehicle cloud looks like. So we are, we are we're going into a way that everything is starting to be connected more and more. We have media agencies, we have uh, insurance companies, we have uh, content providers that have different applications and different mobile apps and uh, service apps that I want to use, uh, even, uh, even for uh, mapping uh, functionalities, but also for buying stuff and for uh, consuming and uh, making my, my car a bit more faster uh, for the weekend if I want. Uh, so there's different, different capabilities. We have support centers, we have repair shop uh, connected. So we want when someone wants to fix my car and we have like fleet companies that have uh, like Uber and Lyft and the other, other uh, types of fleet management so they can manage my fleet. So everything is starting to be connected. And this is how we are giving access to all of these different players to my car, to my vehicle. And this is a bit scary. I, uh, and we need to understand what's the meaning of all this. And the other side, we have V2V and V2I and V2X, uh, different communication between vehicles. But what I'm looking at now, I, I made a simplified view of what I look at what is the car industry and how how the just inserting a key into a car affects everything over here so we have a key and we have the mobile um, we have the mobile phone it's connected to the tsm enrollment so i can enroll a key i can uh, enroll keys whatever whenever i want but in order to do this i have to have a connection between the oem cloud and the tsm the mobile uh, provider i need to i have third parties also because i'm the oem i don't do everything by myself i have third parties like rental platforms and fleet platforms so when i rent a car he will need to get give access to the oem cloud to open uh, the key, the OEM cloud will give access to the TSM enrollment, will download a key to my car and then give me access to the key. So everything is starting to be connected. But in order for everything to work, we also need connections to the production plants and to the OEM IT and different suppliers that are uh, giving the physical IT key, the transponders. So this is a map of showing that everything over here is connected. And now my mission is to try to hack it. So a bit about technologies, we have lots of MQTT uh, and AMQP and HTTP requests like REST APIs uh, to the cloud. We have uh, propriety protocols between the key and the uh, car. We have also between the key and the uh, with mobile phone. Uh, we have different like uh, VNC, even sometimes through suppliers, we have Citrix, we have uh, just-in-time debugging, uh, for usually to SCADA devices and the production plants. We have SOX proxies uh, between the OEM cloud and the third party so they can access different resources. And this is how, how stuff works. Um, but my thesis, and I'm looking at 
if we see this is a way a very simplified way of the cloud connecting to all of these cars these vehicles and I'm looking at if I would be able to hack into the car and I will send over their updates to the different vehicles then the next day I will have something like this and this is very bad for me because when I when this will happen then all the cars will start talking with me and the only way to go back from this it's just total recall so it, there's other ways maybe like to send the, I, I know in the Jeep Cherokee they send the USB keys to people and uh, you can do different types of recalls but it's a, it's a very hard way and because you have if you will have connection to the cloud itself you can just impact 10 million cars, 20 million cars, uh, just like that. So I'm a hunter. I, I like to hack stuff. So let's, let's start hacking. So in order to start hacking, I'm a bit searching for clues. So I, I like to look at embedded areas. I like to look at applications and the internet and uh, also different automotive resources like NASTF. So, but to start, I usually go to the easiest place for me and the hardest place for the um, automotive industry. So if I go to the low level collection, I go to, I, I can buy uh, EC on eBay, I can buy uh, different types of components uh, uh, from the black market or uh, after sales market. And when I go over there and uh, I find chips and I download the uh, memory, I, down I can download memory from them. And if, I, if I'm able to download the memory for JTAG and the different kinds of exploits I find, I, I can find the secrets itself of how is the chip com communicating with the backend. When I will see this, I will, see, I will find different URLs, different secrets, different uh, types of information because the vehicle is connecting and talking with the backend. And usually it has single static keys for all of the components because it's very hard in production to make different keys. And because of this, when I will have access to some kind of uh, memory and uh, get access to the URLs, I find attack points that are not checked, not verified. They, nobody believed I will be able to get access to this. And this is uh, very interesting. Um, furthermore, if I want to go and I don't have the hardware capabilities and I, I want to go through the net, then I have APK. So I have, uh, I can go to APK Pure or to other, like to go to Google Play Store or um, iOS. Google is easier because of Java and it's just more, much more easier to decode stuff. But then I can find different secret keys. And for, like I started doing one app and another app and a third app. And then I decided I want to do them all. So what I did, I wrote a kind of a lib search. It's a program of mine. I open sourced it. That what it does, it downloads all the APKs I want. It downloads everything and uh, extracts all the resources, all the metadata, all the keys, all the everything I can find from it, and uh, just dumps it into Elasticsearch. So I can search it much easily, much easier. And what I did, what I found over there, I found lots of backend URLs and uh, PHP and uh, ASP and st some uh, lots of stuff that are connected to these uh, OBD apps, uh, to these OBD apps, to these uh, fleet management apps, to everything. And over here, this is a good attack surface because it's again it gets you in into a way that usually people don't uh, want you to go in. Uh, I found some secrets. So just by exp uh, secrets in uh, clear text, uh, I connected to one of them. It was valid. Uh, WeChat API is uh, very nice because you have also payment APIs. It's not only in chat and you can access uh, different stuff. But I wanted to continue and I wanted to go in further more. So well, there's a tool called DNS Dumpster. You can also find it. Uh, just manually subdomains. And I just looked for all the subdomains of different car companies and I found so many, it's like, I, I didn't know what to do. So I can now start scanning them all or I can uh, start like, uh, I, there's different HTTP requests over here. I can start scanning and finding my endpoints and where do I want to go? So I can also use Shodan. Shodan is a um, 
Um, just scan over of the internet that looks for other stuff. And I'm looking for different stuff, uh, not even the OEMs, I'm looking for the suppliers themselves. So if I look for Continental, I can find like a FTP of Continental. Usually they host software for the OEMs or they, this is a way that they are uh, giving them a software. Odosar is also a protocol, uh, it's a kind of requirement uh, in uh, vehicles, uh, vehicle development. So I'm looking at all of these, but then if I want to go deeper and I want to go to the automotive area, so I have NASTF. NASTF is, a, they concentrated all the tool set that I want that I can have to access a different uh, diagnostics uh, software. So over here, there's a list of all of the OEMs, all of the car companies and all of the software that you can download. But usually it's, uh, sometimes it's a uh, paywalled. So sometimes when I when I want to access uh, some software update, I can download it. Right? So I can have uh, download updates for the software, but sometimes it just costs me money. So um, it's easy. You go to some forums for uh, car hacking forums or some uh, more uh, repair re uh, car repair forums. It's much better because these guys were doing it already 20, 30 years. They know all the software. They uh, they are they are they have the right to repair. So they just. And you can find over lots of software over there that has uh, uh, that is connecting also to the cloud, OEM cloud and it does also connecting to the vehicle itself. And this is interesting because when you extract data from there, you can find different backend URLs, different access points. Uh, I found some stuff. I have uh, a P1 uh, like I, with bug bounty and one of the suppliers uh, just waiting. They still didn't fix it. So I'm waiting for them to fix it in order to properly disclose. But then we have we have so much information over here that you can download, uh, just look at the NASTF, you can find uh, lots of backend endpoints and lots of stuff. But what I did, I took a list of, uh, a list of all the keywords I could find from, uh, from these websites. And I just created a dictionary so I can search for interesting data and interesting stuff inside. Uh, so you see like CV tech info and OEM software and OEM repair info. And I see a list of all of the o OEMs itself. And I'm start, I started searching like GitHub and different uh, other areas. Uh, and what I love to do is like, people don't know usually how to use GitHub. Uh, they don't know that when you delete stuff from GitHub, it doesn't get deleted. So, I'm just searching in the comments. Uh, I searched in the comments for deleted secret keys and what I want. And then you can find, yeah, he, he deleted the secret keys. He did a push uh, push, and then he saw it. But the GitHub shows you what was previously. And it shows you it very nice in red exactly what was uh, previously, what keys were used. Uh, so you can just uh, connect. Uh, I, I found some different keys. Some worked, some didn't. Some do change it after they understand they, by mistake, say, publish the keys. Some don't. And, uh, but I did find uh, for one of the suppliers that I wanted to target. So I found like a Terraform uh, configuration. And from this Terraform configuration, you know, you can do a lot of stuff. I, I found the keys and uh, the secrets. And next thing you know, after I, I understood what is Terraform and how do I use it. So I just ran access keys and I got about full control of about 100 servers uh, in production. So this is like a production of one one type of uh, supplier. So one supplier, uh, so many servers. They have we had test servers, we have production servers, we have we had different stuff over here. And this is a, a good point I want to go into, and this is my starting point. So until now, I just like did recon and I found different areas, and I have different areas to go over to get over here. But this is the way place I want to be. I want to be in some kind of third party. Just not in the OEM cloud, no, not not connected into nothing, but just outside. So it's out of their comfort zone. They don't secure it properly. The OEMs don't even have, they're not able to secure it because it's not theirs. So this is a good place to be. Uh, and now the game is to start moving and lateral movement from third party to OEM cloud and uh, to other play, uh, places. So... If I'm looking at the third party and OEM clouds, they are usually working with FTP and they are moving files from each other. They have different types of vulnerabilities. Um, but what I did find eventually, I found one FTP open. 
Uh, very basic, it was a dump server. They just dump uh, different configurations, different softwares uh, over there from the third party to the OEM. And after boot forcing a bit, the FTP, I found the name, the username and password was the same of the name of the supplier. So 50% of this, some, it works. The other 50% you need to add like one, two, three, four or something else uh, uh, instead. Sometimes it's a bit more complicated, but usually not not a, not much more. And you can just play with it. Um, so over here, I got a FTP access because the FTP was also open with a HTTP server. I I uploaded a PHP file and got shell access to the different to the other cloud. So now I have like uh, access to the cloud, but it's uh, like a FTP server that not not really connected to nothing. It's not connected to anything. I don't have any connections at all from it. They try to think what, what I can do with uh, this. And then I understood there's a monitoring server. Uh, so after uh, playing with the server a lot, I found out that every midnight there's a monitoring server that connects to my to my server and it does the following stuff. It logs in, it runs code, it gets the result of the code and, uh, and uh, then uses it in order to show the whole OEM IT uh, what's the status of all the servers. So it's a pretty basic thing. The problem is, how does it log in? So there are different ways to log in. Usually I would want uh, everybody to log in with a SSH certificate, uh, with a, but in this case, they logged in with a username and password. So I ran S trace on myself, I, I, on my SSH server. I waited to midnight and I just saw the password. So after seeing this password, I was just I looked and I found out, I got into the monitoring server because the monitoring server was also monitoring itself. So fun. <laughs> and then uh, you can just uh, access different, uh, different areas over here. Also pretty uh, funny in this specific scenario, the password, I wasn't able to use the password the next day because the, okay. Because uh, the password was changed every day. Because password policy, they wanted to change it every day. And what do you do when you change the password every day? You do the date. So the password was a uh, name and then the date. So the next day I came, I tried the next date and it worked. So I was able to connect to all of these uh, different areas. And uh, uh, <laughs> and I was able to see also that I'm, uh, I have a bit of access to the production plan, to different kind of uh, endpoints. And this is a good place I want to be. And now I'm trying to find out what, I'm, what do I want to do? So I'm inside, I'm inside the network, I want to see. And I'm now trying to find out what targets are interesting inside automotive area. So one thing is jump servers. Lots of suppliers use the jump, uh, are restricted. In order to restrict them, we use jump servers to let them access the, our network. The problem with jump servers, they, they're not clean. They usually even, there's a rule, you never, ha you never stop production. So you want all the suppliers always to connect to it. So you never upgrade them. And uh, like basic exploits that you can find over here, there's Internet Explorer, there's uh, lots of stuff over here. And usually it's very easy from a jump server to go out from a Citrix server to go out, get shell access and find out different types of, uh, and see what the suppliers can do. And the suppliers can do a lot. Uh, and they also put some notes, uh, in the passwords.txt and the files and different stuff uh, and in desktop. But then I wanted to continue and go see more. So. I I found out a server with lots of printers. And I found to myself, what is what is this? Why are there so many printers inside the server? And eventually after investigating and understanding what happened, so the production plants have a QR code printer because when you want to put a part, uh, you want to scan it. So you scan it and then you know which part to put to the body. So if you have a door, you want to combine it with uh, the body, you need a blue door with a blue body, you need a red door with a, so you scan, you scan uh, the part and then you can know exactly what to put it. So these are the printers that are printing the QR codes for the technical, for the technicians to know which part uh, they are, uh, they, they need to put in. And if I'm able to disable one of these printers, then the production line just stops. And because it's a line, 
then if one station stops, everything behind it stops and we we change the whole production line. But then also I can I can go and I can change the QR code and then maybe put a different part or um, and even they won't know about it like let's uh, say the screwdriver or the screw we can put a different screw what will happen so this is uh, like a very interesting area that you can play with another area is robotics i want to go into robotics so when i want to go into robotics i try to find there's lots of lots of robotics in the shop floor usually there's a rule don't stop production so the puzzles never change and the so I just looked in the internet and uh, I can find the different default puzzles of the robotics. The fun part over here is that robotics, the puzzles usually are embedded into the robotics themselves. So you cannot change them. If you change them, you stop production. So it's like a way that it's a default puzzle. That everybody knows it. Nobody can change this. And this is pretty interesting. But I wanted to target more. I I usually I go to the development because developers are lazy. They're weak. They have... Uh, so I went to the SVN, connected to the SVN, found a user, um, went to different areas, found a private key of, uh, of one of the servers and then connected to... After looking, uh, finding uh, IoT Hub connections, I connected to one of the servers, MQTT servers that have access to all of the vehicles. And this is nice because now I can subscribe to events. I, I got like all the events of the live vehicles when they are running. I also got some, I was able to send them commands. I didn't continue and see what commands I can do because they stopped me. But I continued looking and then when you're inside, you're inside. So you can do whatever you want. You can, I went to the confluence. I went to get the connectivity organization to look who is the targets I want to hack. So I went over and I went to their desktops. And through the desktops, I went to different areas. Uh, like I found different note, notes. So, but if I want to conclude a bit, so there's lots of, lots of different automotive clouds now coming up, popping up. Everybody is uh, different. There's uh, like Bosch and FCA and uh, Volkswagen and uh, uh, everybody has its own connected services, but it, it's relying on different suppliers. It's different, relying on lots of things outside because the OEMs currently are not in a state that they're building themselves stuff. They are outsourcing most of the, their stuff. And then we see the vehicles are also connecting to outsource data. So it's mainly in the suppliers. And you have to know how to attack and and to see the whole ecosystem and not only, like usually clients come to me, can you attack this server? And I would want this, uh, the clients, the OEMs, yeah, the OEMs to ask me what, how would I go in? And then usually it's from the supplier or through other areas and these areas are out of scope. So you have problems. Uh, so we, uh, we are working with them and working closely and trying to figure out how the best way to attack this area without breaching um, like without getting uh, breaching i don't want to attack bosch i don't want to attack other companies but i do want to verify that the automotive area automotive, my automotive, automotive automotive company is secure so there's lots of multi-connectivity i need to put in lots of effort into secure architecture from the beginning understand the connections and usually understand what happens when I want to put in a keyless system. What does it mean? All the connectivity areas. Now we are going into electric charging. No, it's a big thing. We need to understand everything over here. So maybe I can, I, 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 we had four minutes, so I think of three minutes. So just if you have any questions. Yes. Have you done any research into like the application layer of the cloud? Like for like connect or super Starlink? Yeah, we I've done some stuff not in Starlink and not uh, in this area, but yeah, we did uh, have like access as a user. So usually we had a project that we went, we got access to the infotainment system in order to impersonate ourselves as an infotainment system, and then access just as a regular user has access to the connected cloud and see what what the vehicle can do, and yeah. Yes. like of a full scenario so it, it depends we had a case that it was uh, i think from 
from nothing to everything. It took us two, three months, but it's also lots of waiting for approval. So I had access, I got like a shell access to some server. Now I have to wait two weeks, to wait two weeks to get approval to see how can we continue. And sometimes uh, they gave us, they didn't give, gave us to access the spe same specific uh, area. They created another server inside the network that I can have access to it. And then I continued from there. So it's always like, it's working with the um, companies, but it, it can take you, in the best case, it can take you even four or five days to access uh, if you don't have these uh, different constraints. Yeah. Yeah. Are the companies actually working with you to secure it? Yes. So we are working with a couple of companies. Uh, they are using us to secure uh, their infrastructure. It's always a game and to understand when when is the best to secure it. If we want to do it pre-SOP, like just before uh, SOP starts, uh, SOP is start of production, or we want to do it from the start, from a uh, development phase, but then we have we have more impact, but we don't verify it as much. And if we do it too late, then we know the problems, but they're already on the road. So it's always a game of when is the best thing, when is the best time to secure stuff. Um, on the GitHub account that you actually search for Fusional are public, or do I have access? They were public, they were removed the moment I told them they, they removed everything. Yeah, Yeah. this is usually, there's lots of public GitHub information. You can just search it. There's lots of ways to search GitHub. There's also other, uh, also uh, CI environments, uh, Circle CI. You have lots of uh, nice, uh, nice findings over there. Um, I have like a list of stuff that I'm always looking for, sensitive information that was leaked. Yeah. So which car are you in? <laughs> <laughs> That's a question. Um, I own, no. He owns a bicycle. No, I own a bicycle. No, I, I own a regular connected uh, Citroen. Um, I don't hack myself my car. Usually it's a problem. If you play with your car, sometimes you can break it. Uh, like it's very easy to break it by mistake. And then you need like, uh, I have a friend of mine, he played with the car and then the gearbox just didn't talk with the car anymore. And then what? So, um, okay. yeah. <laughs>